What's up everyone? I got a 2013 Volkswagen Jetta. Complaint is intermittent door locks. They work while she's driving. So uh, what we need to do is duplicate the concern first off and then start the diagnosis. All right, getting ready to take on out of here. So let's see. There goes the locks like they should go. Let's see if they start working again. She did say it was only at slow speed, so most likely it's uh, they're working as they should work. Coming up to a stop sign here. There we go. Again, at 10 miles an hour. Try one more. Boom, there we go. 10 miles an hour. So it's constantly happening at 10 miles an hour, actually like it should. All right, so I got a diagram out here. Pins one and two, powering ground for the motor. Pin four, that's what I believe to be the uh, monitor wire. The switch uh, gets pulled open or closed, depending on whether the motor locks or unlocks. Um, I checked all data. There's no description on system operation here. Um, I've got a snap-on scanner. It doesn't really help me out either. So I did pull some fault codes. Um, I'll show you guys the fault codes. So, um, but one of those fault codes did state that the right rear door lock module was not uh, not a plausible signal so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out I'm gonna lock the car I'm gonna verify that all the door locks are actually working also gonna plug into pins 1 and pin 4 with a scope and we're gonna monitor what's going on all right cars locked Driver's locked, passenger's locked, trunk's locked, fuel tank door is not locked. Oh, that's not locked. Passenger is locked. So, you're right, that is what's going on. This right rear door is not locking. So whenever we are driving down the road, command is sent 10 miles an hour to lock all doors. All right, so I'm no longer driving. What we're doing is we're just hitting the lock and unlock button. And come on, I need you to work for the camera here. Don't let me burn up the door locks. Alright, so I was able to hit the lock button and uh, get the voltage to rise up to battery uh, voltage. So that tells me that the switch is open whenever it's locked. And when it's unlocked, the switch is closed, which pulls the voltage down the ground. Um, there was some amperage flow, but we're talking a couple hundred milliamps, not very much. So pretty sure it'll be safe to put my test light on there. We're going to put my test light on there. We're going to see if we're getting a signal, if we've got a good ground and a good power for controlling this motor. All right, scope's plugged into the power in the ground of the motor wire, or both wires of the motor. That's unlock. That's lock. Unlock. Lock. Now let's go ahead and uh, check out and see what it does while we're driving. 
keep in mind this is unplugged sorry about the glare guys and obviously with that unplugged the automatic door locks do not work if there's an open circuit detected all right so we are on pin two and pin one pin one we're monitoring current pin two we're monitoring voltage so our yellow chase is voltage or uh, amperage sorry guys that damn glare A 20 second time base here so I'm gonna go ahead and try and lock them now we see whenever it tried to lock we got some volts but we had no amperage now I'm gonna go ahead and unlock There we go. So yeah, we're leading to this is going to be an intermittent module because there we got our amperage. That was roughly three amps. Yeah, intermittent. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook a test light to this, see if that circuit will light up the test light. If the circuit lights up the test light, we're golden. All right, the next step in this process is that we need to see if that circuit can carry current. If it's doing okay, you know, from the module, that's the big part. So we're going to hook a test light in, um, just a, uh, a regular old incandescent test light. It's going to be fine. We're going to try that, and we're gonna, as long as it'll light up that bulb, we're good to call the door lock actuator. Just making sure that the signal from that module is fine. All right, sorry guys, we're a little primitive here, but this is what we're going to have to do. Let me see, let me see, let me see. <clears throat> Something magical. Alright, now check out this test light. Let's see if this thing lights up. Lock, unlock. Okay. So that carries current. This actuator. It's faulty. Now it's locking. Sure is. Well, anyways, the circuit holds current, which justifies this is an intermittent fault. So I was able to see earlier in the data, this is the problem in the door. All right, so for me, I got enough proof. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a uh, door lock actuator. Needs to be replaced. We've seen signals coming from the control module to the door lock actuator and it still was not functioning properly. We hit, uh, loaded the circuit with our test light, held current, no problem. So I don't see that being uh, an issue for us at all. This thing has a bad door lock actuator. It's intermittently sticking. She did say the problem was intermittent from the start. So 
So we're gonna go ahead and call that. All right, so looking at the door lock with low equipment. 2013 Volkswagen Jetta 25. The vehicle electrical system control module is what sends out all the information. This is all of the outputs. Takes in the inputs, sends out the outputs. Engine hood contact switch, which we didn't check. But there's no hood light on the dashboard. Um, <clears throat> driver's door central locking unit. Fuel filler door unlock unit. So we've got two wires. That's it. We've only got two wires. That means that the only thing that happens is that the, that motor locks and unlocks. There's no sensing unit. I wouldn't think. I don't have all that. It doesn't tell you anything about this. So I, I mean, honestly, I don't know. Luggage lamp. Rear lid lock unit verified that is actually functioning properly. Put a test lamp on these two circuits, lit the lamp, no problem, both directions. So we're getting signals, wiring integrity is good. We're calling the right rear central locking unit. I've already looked. It's about 160 bucks. Um, the only place I could find it is ECS Tuning. Uh, so that's who I'm going to go with. I mean, obviously, I could probably call AutoZone or something like that. But, uh, man, i just rather have the ECS Tuning parts. So that's who we're going with. we got time on this car. Um, it's been going on for a while as is. So the customer said that, you know, they, they don't mind waiting for shipping and handling and all that stuff. Awesome. So, let's do the repair.